For this lesson, we are going to look at how to rewrite equations. And the main goal for this is to rewrite literal equations, which would be where variables have a specific meaning. Like in the formula, area equals L times W. So L is a length, W is a width, and you could manipulate this formula however we need it. So when we're solving these literal equations, we're not actually getting a specific answer. We're not going to end up with Y equals 2 or W equals 5. We're just going to manipulate the equation so that it's, it's everything's in a different order, a different variables by itself. And we're going to start with some equations in two variables with x and y because this is what we're going to need be, to be able to do to graph these. So when we graph, we want equations in slope-intercept form. It's not the only way to graph, but I think it's one of the easiest. So slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So if we can rewrite our equation in this form, then we could then take the next step and graph it. So for this form, we need to get the y all by itself and everything else on the other side. Looking at number one, I need to get the y by itself, which means I need to get rid of that 3x. We're going to use the same steps that we would to solve a regular equation, only we won't get a certain answer. On number one then, to get rid of this 3x, this 3x is being added to the y, so the opposite is to subtract it, to move it to the other side to make 0. To make 0, I need to do a minus 3x. Because 3x and minus 3x, that makes 0. But what I do to one side, I have to do to both sides, so I have to minus 3x from the other side. That is going to give me that y all by itself like I wanted. And I can't actually do 21 minus 3 because it's not 3, it's 3x, and those are not like terms. So we could just leave it as 21 minus 3x. Or, because we're looking at our next lesson is to graph, we can write it in this form. We want the m and the x to come first, and the number by itself, which would be b, to come last. So in that case, it would look like y equals a negative 3x and a positive 21. So as I rewrite that, notice that that minus sign was in front of the 3. It still stayed in front of the 3. The 21 was positive. The 21 is still positive. So make sure we watch for our signs when we're rewriting these like that. So either one of those answers is fine. This is a form that might help us graph it a little bit easier. So that's what I'm going to be aiming for. Number two is a little bit different because we're going to have an extra step. Just like when we solve a two-step equation, we want to get rid of our adding, subtracting first before we multiply or divide. Same thing here. So I need to get rid of this whole 5x first before I can divide. I need to get rid of this 3 from the y. That 3 is being multiplied by the y. Can't take care of that until after we get rid of that 5x. So we're going to do just like we did in number 1. I'm going to get rid of the x to the other side first. So I'm going to do minus 5x because it's positive 5x. To make this 0 I need to be a negative 5x. That makes 0. So I'm minus 5x from the other side. And that's going to be 3y equals and like we said over here, I want to get the m and the x first, and then the b by itself. So I'm going to put that negative 5x first, and the positive 30 second. You could also say 30 minus 5x, and that's fine. Now I need to get rid of this 3 times x. The opposite is to divide by 3 to get rid of that. And then all the y's by itself. But if we divide this left side by 3, I've got to divide the right side by 3. We can do that in two ways. I could divide this entire side by 3, but again, because I'm looking ahead at what's going to come next and what comes next is graphing, the best way to do this in preparation for graphing is instead of dividing the whole thing, we divide each part separately by 3. And then the x part here just stays negative 5 over 3x. That can't be reduced anymore, but I can reduce this part here the 30 over 3, 30 over 3 is it's the positive 10. Number 3. 
I'm going to eventually have to divide to get rid of that 7 that's attached to the y. But we want to, remember, we want to multiply our divide last. So first we're going to get rid of this x. It's a positive x to make 0. I need a negative x to make 0. And then I minus x from the other side. That's going to give me that 7y by itself. There is no number in front of x. Well, there really is a 1. If that helps, we can put a 1 there. So I have a negative 1x and a positive 48. Again, you could switch it and say 48 minus x or 1x. That's fine also. Now I can do my dividing. So I'm going to divide both sides by 7. Again, in preparation of graphing, I'm going to divide each of these by 7. That's going to give me that y all by, myself, y all by itself. And then negative 1 over 7 doesn't reduce any. And 48 over 7 does not reduce any. So I would leave it as 48 over 7. When you're graphing, you can turn that into a decimal. That way it's easier to plot on the graph, and that would be fine. Number four is similar, so I want to get rid of this x. I'm going to do minus x on both sides so that that x cancels out. So I have 2y equals negative 1x plus 1. Again, that 1 came from when there's no coefficient. We can put a 1 there. And again, for I'm graphing, I want to put that x first. That's just my preference. Now I want to get rid of that 2, so I'm going to divide by 2 and divide each part by 2. Now we got the y by itself, negative 1 over 2x plus 1 over 2. And again, this I would want to leave as a fraction. Again, because I'm looking ahead at graphing, slope should be a fraction rise over run. But this one here we can turn into a decimal would be fine. Number five, more of the same thing. So we're going to minus x from both sides to get to 5y equals negative 1x plus 51. Then we're going to divide everything by 5. So we get y equals negative 1 fifth x plus 51 over 5. And again, I would suggest for graphing purposes, leave this slope as a fraction, our rise over run, but you can go ahead and turn the y-intercept into a decimal so we can plot it on the graph easier. One more like this. This time we have a 2x, so I'm going to have to minus 2x. If this had been a negative 2x, then I would have done a plus 2x since we've done similar ones. So whatever that is, you want to do the opposite to make it cancel out, to make 0. Be careful with this when there's a minus sign in front of the 7. We have not used it yet, so the minus sign still stays in front of that 7, making it negative 7y. And then we're going to divide everything by negative 7 to get that y by itself. Here, two negatives make a positive, so it's positive 2 over 7x. And then 49 divided by negative 7 is negative 7, so that one can reduce down to a whole number. Okay, for our last two problems, these are the true literal equations where this is area equals base, one half base times height is what those letters stand for. And we're going to be solving for h, the height. So we're just going to manipulate this so the h is a 1 by itself instead of the a. The 1 half and the b are both multiplying the h, so they'll both have to be divided. I'm going to do just one at a time. Let's go ahead and take care of that 1 half first. We have to divide by one half on both sides. But let's think about what that means. To divide by one half, that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So dividing by one half is the same thing as multiplying by two. So really we're multiplying by two on both sides. And that's just remembering how to divide fractions. Like if I had three divided by one half, I would take three over one times two over one, and two over one is just same thing as 2. So dividing is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So if I do that, then this is going to give me a times 2 or 2a. The 1 half and the 2 cancel each other out, that's why we did that. And then I have b and h. Then I still got to get rid of that b being multiplied, so the opposite to divide by b on both sides. Now I've got the h by itself, and then we have 2 times a over b. And for our last one, 
this is forming for perimeter of a rectangle equals 2 times the length plus 2 times the width, and we're going to solve to get the W all by itself. This is going to be almost exactly what we were just doing. We'll just have an extra variable in there. So we need to get the W all by itself. So I'm going to first move over that 2L by doing the opposite of positive 2L, then I need a negative 2L, a negative 2L to make 0. Again, these are not these are not the same terms. We can't actually subtract, so that says P minus 2L, and that is equal to 2W. And then I simply get rid of that 2, so we divide by 2, and I divide each part by 2 over here, kind of like how we did up above to get that W by itself. P over 2, there's nothing I can do with that. But here, this 2 and 2, they can cancel each other out because 2 divided by 2 is just 1. So really, I just have minus L since those 2's cancel each other out. And every time you do a literal equation, it's going to be a little bit different. None of them are going to be exactly the same. You're just using the same process that we used for regular equations and applying it to these type of equations.